Vi är inte här. I'm so glad that you finally found me! Welcome to Vasa Parken here in Stockholm, Sweden. Let's go inside. And it feels so good to know that you are with us from different corners from all around the world. Let the celebrations of this year's Astrid Lindgren Memorial Award begin. This is a worldwide event to highlight that children have the right to great stories. My name is Ami Bramesi and I have the great pleasure of being your host for this evening. And to make this event well even more exciting, we've invited choreographer Claire Parsons and her great dance company to just help us out a little bit. And we have some very important guests with us tonight. Her Royal Highness Crown Princess Victoria, Sweden's Minister of Culture and Democracy Amanda Lind, and Boel Vestin, the jury chair of the Astrid Lindgren Memorial Award. This year we have a very special event since we're celebrating both last year's award and this year's. We have Bakina, the laureate of 2020, and Jean-Claude Morleva the Laureate of 2021. And we will also be hearing young readers from all around the world. But right here in Vasaparken, we're actually really close to the world of Astrid Lindgren. Moments ago, you were in her apartment, the place where Pippi Longstockings was born. This is the place where she was telling her daughter bedtime stories, stories that later on became some of the most loved children's stories in the whole world. Now let's meet some of the young readers that are sitting right here in the library. Ever since the award was established by the Swedish government back in 2002, what we think that all laureates have in common is their wish to reaffirm that children have the right to great stories. So it doesn't matter if they're a writer or an illustrator or a reading promoter, they all share the same belief, just like Astrid Lindgren, that creating and writing and reading great stories can change the world. So now let's hear from some of the well, maybe most important people of the whole evening, the young readers. I'm sitting here with Greta and Malte, and I'm very curious. What are you reading right now, Malte? I'm reading a book called, it's a Swedish book called Mördarens apa. Mördarens apa? Yes. That sounds like, a, is it a scary book? No, not really. It's kind of sad, actually. Okay, mm -hmm. Mördarens apa, a book recommendation. What about you, Greta? I have currently finished a book called The Perks of Being a Wallflower and I really enjoyed it. 
and I'm gonna watch the movie soon. So I'm excited to see how that will be.、Mm-hmm. And do you have a favorite book? Yeah, actually, right now it is the Perks of Being a Wallflower.、Mm. So, what would you say is your favorite book, Malta? It's Percy Jackson or the whole series. Now you've heard some of the young readers here in Stockholm, Sweden. Let's hear some other voices from kids around the world. Hello, guys. My name is Anna. What is the name of your favorite book? Mordenina. And who is your favorite character? Emily. My favorite book is My Sweet Orange Tree. But if I want to be a book character, I would like to be Jenny in the Tulipati book. She's unpredictable and interesting. My favorite book is The Magic Coat, and my favorite animal inside this is Tape the Sea Turtle. My favorite book is Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. This is Jackie's sister. They are Jackie, Lulu, and Lolo. I want to be Jackie because she is kind and cute. My favorite book is this one, Amy and the Gehenna Bibliotheque. My favorite book is Greek myths because I like reading about gods and goddesses, and I would like to be like Aphrodite, who is the goddess of beauty and love. My favorite book is Roger and the School Bus. From the book I have read, I want to be Roger. This is Hatarak Saibo, walking self in English. I want to be one of. The white bird cell, because she's cute and strong. The Barbie of Cinderella. If you could be someone from the book, who would that be? Cinderella. My favorite book is Stone Fox. I would be Searchlight the dog because she helps the main character win the race. This is me, the same father by whom I have a favorite is the story of the clever Thirsty Crow. I would choose the character of the crow. The book I have read over and over is The Little Prince. I can interpret the book differently each time I read it. So by Raton, there, there are no lowe. The Percy Jackson series. Is there any book you have read many times? Which one? No, I like reading new books. Bye. See you again. Since 2002, the Astrid Lindgren Memorial Award has honored 19 laureates. And what's special about this award is that it's not just given to illustrators and writers, but to reading promotion organizations as well. And this award was created not just to honor Astrid Lindgren as the legendary writer that she was, but to reaffirm. Her legacy as an advocate for children's rights, and to highlight the importance that she placed on reading. We are very excited and so proud to honor both the work of the French writer Jean Claude Morleva and the Korean illustrator and writer Pakina. Every year, we get hundreds and hundreds of nominations from all over the world, and during nine months of intense but, of course, inspiring work. Our 12-member expert jury go through the hard work of choosing the laureates, and I am very happy to say that one member of the jury is here tonight. Hi, Ami. You found me. Yes, Boel, you're the chair of the jury. I'm sure that everyone is very excited to know how do you reach a decision through these hundreds 
of brilliant nominations. It's really a tough job, but we have a lot of fun. We are 12 members of the jury with different backgrounds, authors, illustrators, scholars, children's rights specialists, librarians. And this year we have read, or read through over 250 nominations made by organizations around the world. It takes us nine months of intense work uh, to read, study, and then reach a final decision. The most important thing is, I think, to keep an open mind in order to get as much information as you possibly can. We are the explorers of the international world of children's literature. Thank you so much, Boel. And now please follow me. We can go meet the laureates. Okay, now it looks like we have places for all of our guests to sit. <laughs> okay. So now it's time for us to get to know our laureates a little bit better. It's my enormous pleasure to present for you a short film about the 2020 Astrid Lindgren Memorial Award laureate, Pakina. Kina is a Korean picture book artist, born in Seoul in 1971. Her impressive craft weaves together text, images, characters, and environments to create a uniquely three-dimensional experience in book form. From her first book, Cloud Bread, to her most recent, I Am a Dog, Pekina opens the door to new enchanted worlds in our midst, turning the small details of daily life into magical experiences. After attending Yua Women's University in Seoul, she worked with multimedia for children. Then she moved to the United States to study animation at California Institute of the Arts. She stayed in the United States for several years, working as an animator. It was back in Seoul, after the birth of her daughter, that she first began making her own picture books. For her picture books, Pekina works with richly detailed worlds that she lights and photographs with great care. She creates her characters by hand, making many copies, each with tiny differences in body language and facial expression. She sews tiny garments, makes shoes, and hand prints wallpapers, even if we might only catch a glimpse of them in the background of a story. Her craft is impressive, time-consuming, and a true labor of love. In her later books, Bath Fairy, Magic Candies, and I Am a Dog, her characters become ever more expressive, and her environments more cinematic, more inspired by animation. In her hands, the craft of the picture books finds a unique expression. Pekina is both a skilled visual artist and an equally skilled storyteller. The common thread that unites her work is a longing for friendship and community. Her dynamic, magical worlds have the power to draw readers into her stories. In Little Chick Piyaki's Mom, a mean cat eats an egg. But that is not the end of the story. It is just the beginning. The baby chick in the egg does not die. Instead, it grows inside the cat. Eventually, the cat gives birth to the chick and becomes its mother. This extravagant, almost provocative book 
takes an unsentimental view of parenthood and adds a humorous twist. Pekina has a strong commitment to the child's point of view. She also portrays older characters with great care and respect. In Bath Fairy, a young girl visits a bathhouse and meets a mysterious old lady there who turns out to be a bath fairy. It is a story that shows off both Pekina's unerring sense of situation comedy and the powerful way that a child experiences the world. The naked figures of both the young girl and the old lady are pictured in a matter-of-fact but sensitive way. Pekina's stories frequently center on an enchanted version of the everyday. In Magic Candies, a lonely boy named Dong Dong experiences a turning point in his life when he finds some magic sweets. The candies give Dong Dong the ability to hear and speak to animals, objects and even his dead grandmother. The narrative takes the form of an inner monologue by Dong Dong about growing closer to his father and leaving loneliness behind. Here, Pekina uses words and letters as tangible, moldable materials to magnificently lyrical effect. Pekina is the 2020 Asti Lindgren Memorial Award Laureate for her pioneering work in the picture book medium. With courage and without compromise, she investigates new techniques and displays an impressive sensibility for words and materials, time and space, bodies and gesture. She creates worlds that enchant and engage, amuse, amaze and move us. Her books are filled with an unshakable faith in the power of play and imagination in our lives. They call to us, inviting us to step into her parallel worlds, to see, think and feel in new ways. It is an invitation we are delighted to accept over and over again. I think we all know that a great book will take us on a journey. Now, I'm really happy to invite back our traveling companions of this evening, our dancers, here with an interpretation of Pakina's work. Take the stage, Claire Parsons' company.
Thank you so much. And now it's time to learn about this year's laureate, Jean-Claude Morleva. Voilà! Jean-Claude Morleva is a French author. A common theme that runs throughout his work is his love for books and literature. After first working as a teacher, he later became an actor, a clown, and a theatre director. The theatre led him to begin writing, and he published his first book in 1997. His love for the written word can perhaps be traced to a childhood where books were largely absent. As a boy, Mulliver spent eight years at a very strict boarding school. Much of his time, he was homesick and unhappy. More than once he has said that literature was his salvation, and he especially remembers being affected by Daniel Defoe's Robinson Crusoe. Mulliver blurs genre, but he always maintains a connection to our contemporary world, giving new dimensions to his stories. The classic fairy tale, the fight between good and evil is important in his books, but this battle often develops in unexpected ways and can end unpredictably. One example is his book Le Chagrin de Roi Mort, a story where courage, self-sacrifice and solidarity are tested. Friendships grow stronger in the face of evil forces and war. Jean-Claude Mollivar moves seamlessly between fairy tales, fables, fantasies, between science fiction, picture books, autobiography and documentary. He often deals in twos, two friends, two siblings, two lovers, battling a cruel and hostile world. The stories that develop are frequently characterised by surprising twists and unforeseen resolutions. One example is the irresistible fable Jefferson, where the main character is a hedgehog who loves to read. When Jefferson is accused of killing his hairdresser and is forced to run away from his nice safe home, his love of reading novels takes on critical importance. In his dystopian contemporary novel Terrienne, a highly original science fiction work, 17-year-old Anne Collody is searching for her older sister, who's disappeared without trace into a parallel world where breathing has been outlawed and people die of sheer boredom. In part, the novel can be read as a reimagining of the dreadful tale of Bluebeard, the man who kills his wives and locks their bodies in a secret room, or as an idiosyncratic paraphrase of the myth of Orpheus and Eurydice. It is a celebration of the senses, of physical existence. The smells, sounds, sights, dirt, and noise of everyday life. Mullivar's characters are often abandoned, orphaned, and vulnerable. They must make their own futures for themselves. In L'Enfant Océane, we follow seven brothers and sisters running away from a troubled home. The youngest, Jan, is ten years old, but tiny, no larger than a two-year-old. Jan has special, magical gifts, and so it is that he leads them on their difficult and dangerous journey west to the ocean. He is a guardian angel for the older children. Jan is just one of Mulevar's many characters who seem to walk in a supernatural fairy tale realm rather than the real world. Traveling, journeys, are common elements in Mulevar's stories. For young people, these may be voyages of initiation, forming bridges to adulthood. His characters often confront a world of suffering, separation and death. Happy, harmonious endings are far from guaranteed. Yet, Mulliver's writing is also infused with a powerful, life-affirming humanism and often made manifest in the action his characters take. There is an exceptional longing for goodness in his work that makes his stories truly affecting. Time and space hang suspended in his literary world, a world open to hardship and beauty in equal measure. Jean-Claude Moleva is the Astrid Lindgren Memorial Award Laureate 2021.
And now I'm really curious to see how our dancers honor the magical worlds of Jean-Claude Morleva. <laughs> Now it's finally time to meet our laureates for real, or maybe not for real, for real here in Stockholm, but through a broadcast media link. Let's say hello to Seoul, Pakina at the Swedish Embassy. How are you? Hi, I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Nice to have you with us. And all the way to Saint-Just in France, Jean-Claude Morleva. Hello. Hello. I hope everything is well with you. Yes, everything is fine. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you both for your extraordinary work. And from me, congratulations. We'll hear more from our laureates in just a bit. But now it's my great pleasure to welcome our Minister of Culture and Democracy, Amanda Lind. Your, your Royal Highness, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, Bakina and Jean-Claude Morleva. Everything great that ever happened in this world happened first in somebody's imagination. These words of Astrid Lindgren describes the importance of sparking interest, especially in young people, in imagining a better tomorrow. The works of Bakina and Jean-Claude Morleva embody the spirit of this quote. Their intricate stories and pictures give us new perspective of what it means to be a human, to be a child. Congratulations to you both for receiving the Astrid Lindgren Memorial Award, given in memory of one of the greatest Swedish authors in our time. Bakina's books let children experience a world that is magical, yet they speak to a very real existential questions of loneliness and comradery. And in the world of Jean-Claude Morleva, 
readers are taken on adventures that are both humorous and serious, inviting us to examine not just society, but also ourselves. Both authors use original and unique techniques to reimagine storytelling in shy children's and youth literature. And it is a privilege to experience the works of these two incredible authors. Literature can open our imagination to marvelous new worlds and take us to journeys across time and space. And over the past year, literature has helped us to find hope in a world turned upside down by the corona pandemic. All of us have been affected. Children and young people are not an exception. And for younger generations all across the world, literature, culture and the arts have served as means to explore the world from inside of their homes and to find new worlds can also give them comfort and joy. The wonderful thing about this prize is that it is a global prize. The prize is awarded to the best children's and youth adult literature in the whole world. Thanks to this international mission, we can find and celebrate diversity in all its facets. I'm very happy to warmly congratulate you both on behalf of the Swedish government on the award of the world's most distinguished prize for children's and young adult literature. Thank you for enriching us and future generations, for inspiring us, for sparking new interest in exploring this and other worlds, and for helping us imagining a better tomorrow. Thank you, Amanda Lind. And now we've come to the more formal part of this proceedings. Boel Vestin, chair of the Alma jury, can you please read the motivations of the jury's laureates for 2020 and 2021? This is for Pekina. With exquisite feeling for materials, looks and gestures, Pekina's filmic picture books staged stories about solitude and solidarity. In her evocative miniature worlds, cloud bread and sorbet moons, animals, bath fairies and people converge. Her, door, her work is a doorway to the marvelous, sensuous, dizzying and sharp. Dear Pekina, warmest congratulations from all of us in the jury. And this is for Jean-Claude Moleva. Jean-Claude Moleva is a brilliant renewer of fairy tale traditions, open to both hardship and beauty. Time and space are suspended in his fictional worlds, and eternal themes of love and longing, vulnerability and war are portrayed in precise and dreamlike prose. Moleva's ever surprising work pins the fabric of ancient epic onto contemporary reality. Dear Jean-Claude Moleva, warmest congratulations from all of us in the jury. Dear laureates, guests and friends from all over the world who are watching, it's my honor and great pleasure to welcome Our Royal Highness, Crown Princess Victoria. Thank you, Ami. Dear Mrs. Hina, Monsieur Mourleva, please accept my warmest congratulations on receiving this uh, precious and very prestigious award. Historically, literature for children has not always been as highly regarded as literature for adults. And yet, we know that those whose images and words can find their way into a child's heart and mind, who can spur its imagination, whose, those artists and authors can make 
true differences and change entire lives. Astrid Lindgren was definitely one such gifted and skilled author. Her delightful stories with their uh, strong message of humanity have been read and cherished by generations of children around the world. I am grateful that Astrid Lindgren's memory lives, lives on, not just in her books, but also through the Astrid Lindgren Memorial Award, reminding us of the transformative power of good literature. Dear laureates, your work helps children develop their language, their creativity, and their empathy. I personally can't think of any more important gift to pass on to coming generations. So, thank you. And once again, my warmest congratulations. And now it's time for a little bit of magic. for a little bit of magic. And you can open your diplomas. And these diplomas that the laureates are opening are specially made every year to honor and uh, to give a tribute to their work. Bakina, yours is made by the Swedish illustrator Matilda Ruta and designer Maya Setteberg. And Jean-Claude Morleva, your diploma is made and illustrated by Christine Lindström and designed by Henning Trollbeck. Rapid comme moi. Oh, I just opened it. Oh. We can see the beautiful so diploma of Pakina. <laughs> Someone made this diploma it's very well packed <laughs> all the way to San Just and Seoul. And now let's see. Oh, oh wow. Yeah. Oh, it's so pretty. Oh, voilà. oh. yeah, congratulations. <laughs> oh, What's this up? is so beautiful. No. Wow. <laughs> oh, this is amazing. Um, <clears throat> yeah, and now let's hear from our new laureates. My pleasure to present mm. In Seoul, Pakina. Um. Thank you, Your Royal Highness. Uh, this is truly a magic. Uh, I got this prize from the princess for truly so magical. I am very happy that I didn't give up. When I was little, I lived in my imagination world and liked to draw and play with the dolls by myself all day long. 
and I still do the same thing. The only difference is I can end up with picture books after all playing. I do enjoy working, but sometimes I feel lonely and totally isolated from the world out there. Then I start to thinking of the readers, imagine the readers, especially three to five years old readers. Maybe they cannot read the text yet. Maybe they cannot easily concentrate on reading for a long time. I do my best. I do my best to entertain them as the actors do on the stage, trying to please the audience. This is how I am connected with the outside of the world. We easily suppose that the process of raising children is full of happiness. And childhood is supposed to be the most beautiful and peaceful period of our lives. But this fairy tale is not always applied to every life. We have so many troubles that could harm our children. We feel guilty when we cannot make a perfect environment for them. I believe that children's picture book can be the key to the door to a happy childhood. Maybe a single mom, dad, grandfather, or grandmother, or any caregiver cannot spend the whole day with their children with full care. For just for a minute, when they read together, caregivers and children can have the same adventure, spending the most nutritious time. Those moments can fulfill the lack of our lives. Those moments can give us happy moments, happy childhood memories and make it possible to dream for a bright future. Those moments are the real magical moment. And that makes me feel the honor to be a children's book creator. If I could succeed in giving those moments to somebody, I think it would be the most honorable prize for the picture book author, even though it would be done secretly. This award convinced me to stick to what I believe and go for it. Lastly, I would like to give special thanks to my loving family who makes me laugh. And special thanks to my partner, Bear Books, who has believed in me. And special, special, special thanks to those children who enjoys reading. Thank you very much. Hmm. Thank you so much for your beautiful words and, of course, for your extraordinary work, Pakina. And now let's go from Seoul to Saint-Just, France, and let's hear this year's laureate, Monsieur Jean-Claude Morleva. Dom se nastet vo mon aderna, aria vermudligen sagt fura ort, uf tare en nogon sin under hela mit liv. Dessa fyra ord är Sved, Svedois, Astrid och Lindgren. As you can imagine, I pronounced these four words with great pleasure. Astrid Lindgren Memorial Award 2021. Since the announcement uh, two months ago, I never stopped wondering why me? I, I am so happy, I am proud. But at the same time, I feel like uh, hiding in a hole deep in the forest, like a hobbit or like uh, Jefferson, my little hedgehog because it is so overwhelming. It is almost uh, too much. I, I, I am flabbergasted. Firstly, I want to express my deep gratitude to the Alma jury, who chose me among 260 candidates. I want to thank my publishers, my, uh, in France and abroad, my readers. I want to thank my wife, Rachel, 
who has been for more than 20 years my first reader and my first listener. And because she says that the three best storytellers ever are Charlie Chaplin, Roald Dahl, and me. Even if I am only in the third position, I feel very, very honored. A special thanks also to my two children. They have encouraged me as well all these years, and it means a lot to me. Thank you, thank you to both of them. I want to add my admiration, yes, my admiration to the government of Sweden that had in 2002 the bright idea to create this fantastic award celebrating both Astrid Lindgren and the youth literature. Uh, they took the young readers very, very seriously. It reminds me a young French boy, after I met his class, he told me, thank you for speaking to us like to real people. I know, uh, I often say that I write for everybody and not especially for children, and that's true. But I must admit, uh, getting slowly older, that I feel more and more touched and uh, bewitched by these little persons, their innocence, their energy, and their optimism. Finally, and very, very selfishly, let me please repeat these four words, these four beautiful words. Sued, Suédois, Suédoise, Astrid, Lindgren. Thank you, thank you so much. Merci infiniment. Thank you so much, Jean-Claude Morleva and Paquina, for your words. I'm truly moved to hear your uh, words about this prizes. And again, congratulations. And now I would like to give my warmest thanks to Her Royal Highness, Crown Princess Victoria, to Amanda Lind, our Minister of Culture and Democracy, to Boel Vestin, Chair of the Jury, and of course, our lovely dancers, Claire Parsons and her dance company. Now this ceremony is drawing to a close and the journey to find next year's laureate begins. Stay in touch through Alma's website and social media all year around. And thank you, dear viewers from all over the world for sharing this evening with us. I hope you had just as much fun as I did. We look forward to seeing you again next year. Good night. And don't forget, children have the right to great stories. Good night. <laughs>